Hey, I want you to know something this morning. Everybody's been paying honor to the queen this week. We got our own queen with us this morning. She was the homecoming queen of Fairfield Christian. Congratulations. <laughs> she came in late for practice this morning. I said, what do you think you are, a queen? <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Where's Joel at? Listen, did anybody see uh, Joel's pictures on Facebook? My goodness. He, uh, that was one handsome guy decked out in his suit right there. Good job, Joel. They, uh, let me tell you, they represented Frontline Church of God very, very well. And I'm uh, proud of you guys. Very proud of you. We, uh, Oh, where you at, Tim? Here. You want what? Real quick. I don't think this will take too long. <laughs> we got the big announcement, Tim. An acronym. You guys know an acronym. It's a, a word to give a message formed by the initials of other words. It, does that get it? I looked it up on Google to get it right. I, it wasn't. It's, it's not right. <laughs> that good. An acronym would be an example of it. Would be uh, uh, great. Let's use the word grace. And and it's not really an acronym. But it's used that way. It's a real word. Acronyms uh, may not be a real word, but they seem to form the syllables right as to make the word. Right? Uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. Okay? There's an acronym. Glenn and I was privileged to go to uh, uh, a banquet the other night about uh, unwed mothers. And uh, they use this as an acronym. And I it's so hard to remember this because it's not a word, but they, they, this is what they call themselves. Pe Pregnancy Defense Health Center. It's their goal to bring young ladies that are uh, pregnant and have been through a lot of trauma in their life, and if not trauma, just simply sin, and they're afraid to tell daddy. And they give them the opportunity to make an intelligent decision. This is a Catholic organization, but you would never know it, <laughs> the way we diss them in a lot of ways. We do, we do. Uh, but it was so full of Jesus, it was incredible. Uh, did I give the definition of that? Uh, the, 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 this is the acronym, if you can call it that. Pregnancy Defense, Defense Health Center. They give them, if you go to Planned Parenthood, they don't really give you uh, the consequences of what's going to take transpire thereafter. It's, it's awful, the trauma these people go. And I know the ladies know it well. And some of the men have some smattering of, of a knowledge of it. Uh, but uh, I listened to this lady who had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful testimony. And all testimonies, if they give to glory to God, are beautiful. I want to read Corinthians 2, just a little bit about our testimony. Ultimately, a testimony doesn't speak to yourself, though we give one in reference to ourselves, to the glory of Jesus. I got healed. To the glory of Jesus. Ye met my bills this week. To the glory of Jesus, right? So, in Corinthians, every testimony is valid. I just want to read a little something about that verse. You are our letter. testimony or written testimony. You'll see it in the court of law and such. You are our letter written in our hearts, known and read by all men. 
That's why it's important to be a walk in Christ and a walk in the Spirit. Being manifested that you are a letter of Christ, cared for by us, written not with ink but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone but on tablets of human hearts. A testimony should come from the heart. It's not about us. It's not centered on us. Uh, this, this, this organization, uh, initially when it started out, they had a banquet, and ultimately they asked for money. They always do. But, it, but I, I give only if I'm in agreement, in agreement with the organization and the message it has. Okay? It was one of the most phenomenal organizations I've ever seen operate. They, they opened up with a banquet food, and then they, they made this little plea, business plea, uh, or they, 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 they gave us understanding how the organization operates so that we know where they really stand and blah, blah, blah. And then they brought up the testimony of the evening. It was a woman who had uh, fallen into sin. Her daddy was a pastor. And she had gone through trauma of some sort through the family, not the, not the past dad. And uh, she ended up getting four abortions. Four abortions. And she went to the Planned Parenthood or something of, of the like. And they're so deceitful. And they uh, manipulate your thinking. They can even give you some kind of soft drug to, to calm you down. And thus, they don't even know what they did. They're after you. It's like blank. So she had four abortions and uh, she taught and, and she did a lot of evil things uh, along with that and she was just totally lost. I can't convey that. I can't convey your testimony. It's your testimony. Can't do it. I can give you my testimony. I can convey it. And I went to God that the Spirit of God had touched my heart and speak, speak, speak what she went through and the trauma she went through. This, this, this organization is really a woman's ministry. It's, it's, it's not a man. If you, you should want to contact them or whatever, ladies, if you feel led to go that way. It's not that we don't agree with it. There were men there who were part of it. But there's so many little things you can do to help the organization. But nonetheless, her, her testimony, I, I've heard a lot of testimonies. Uh, I've been saved uh, 46 years, 47 now. 46 of them, which, which, which Bowen can give me a real testimony <laughs> about who I am. But, but uh, and so I've heard a lot of wonderful testimonies. And I don't know you can really put one over another. But I can put it way up there about what she said these girls go through. One out of three girls, and she looked at the audience, and I, I don't want to say this about us. I know it's not true. I hope it's not true. One out of three girls get pregnant before marriage. The boys are worse because they leave them, and there's more of them that impregnate girls or try to than the girls. The boys are awful. This is a two-way street. You can't get pregnant without a boy and a girl, right? So that's, that's as far as I know, that's why it worked for me. No gender confusion. None. Boy, I got to go. So, anyway, I just want to put that out there. It's called Pregnancy Defense Health Center. If you're looking for a ministry that's valid, that's Jesus-led, that cares about these girls, that tells them everything they're going to experience in their life thereafter, and what this woman went through was phenomenal, the, the things that transpired in her life. You don't want to go through that. God loves you, girls. God loves you, girls. God loves you, girls. I love saved. It's like I love my wife. Men, men of God, love your children unconditionally so they'll come home when they sin. She didn't have nowhere to go. Her daddy was a pastor. She felt she shamed him. 
And then it just went from there. She was just torn down emotionally and did so many God-awful things. You don't want that for our girls. You're his partner's boys. I see the old movies, you know, a guy's mad because he didn't have a son. Hogwarts! Be glad you got a daughter. She's as, just as precious. Just as precious. And it's your job to make her greater yet. Please do that. So that's my plea today. Because it touched my heart that strongly. I have, and, and I'm not dissing anybody's testimony. Come up after me and give a testimony. A testimony is only good if it gives glory to Jesus. I hope this testimony gives glory to Jesus in your life. And it's only good if you do it. And if, if God's in it, it's as good as any other testimony. The girls in the nursery, you just think they're babysitting. You've got to be kidding me. It's as valid as Chris. It's valid it's because God made it holy. God made it holy. It's just important. It's the first step in life. You telling me we don't want him on track? Thank you, mothers. Thank you, mothers. Thank you, mothers. How woeful I was. All I had was a brother, and we fought half the time. God had to have mercy if we'd have had a little sister. Who knows what would have happened. I'd have lost the fight. If, if Ann Scholl was here, and her and Gary talk about how the twins are being more tender. I said, well, but anyway, I'm done. Uh, I said I'd be a few minutes. I guess you could. I don't know. Did the girl get saved? Yes, obviously she did, didn't she, Tim? Yes. Hey, Tim. Grab, grab an offering plate. Stand to your feet. Someone get an offering plate over here. I'll tell you what we're going to do. You got some music for me up there, Ben? Got something for me? All right. I'll tell you what. Just stand right there, Tim. Turn the music on. And when the music starts, bring your offering up. Put it in the basket. They're going to stand right there. I just want to get you moving before I preach here. So, all right. Go for it. All right, step out from your seat, bring your offering up, put it in the plate. While you're doing that, youth tonight at 5.30, archery and Bible study start tomorrow night, uh, Monday night. We got youth uh, Thursday night. We got a lot of stuff going on. It's going to be good. Amy, junior high, stand in here. Or are you going? You're taking them for class. Okay. All right. High school uh, is, teens are staying in here. Everyone else, you are dismissed to head back to class. Do what? You want to stay in for the big announcement? I don't care. You can do what. You're the teacher. You can do whatever you want to do. Junior highs headed back. All right. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Tim was talking about it is a local organization in Fairfield County. They're doing a great, great thing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen.
All right, you're going to stand there? I'm going to use a passage of scripture this morning that I have used once once or twice. Um, I am looking for streets. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That, you, you can leave him out there because when I tell this story, he's probably going to, all right, he'll, he'll come in here and he'll be mad. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10 says, Using a dull axe requires great strength, so sharpen the blade. That's the value of wisdom. It helps you succeed. So help me out here real quick. What is the definition of insanity? Insanity is what? Very good. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the person next to you, and I want you to politely ask them this question. Go ahead, look. Look at Danny. All right, ask Kim, ask her the question, are you insane? Now, I'm afraid what the answer is for some of you. There are a lot of people, Virgil, they go through the motions year after year after year, and nothing in their life ever changes. We want things to change. We need things to change. We hope for things to change. We talk a lot about change. We even pray about change. But we keep doing the same things over and over and over again, expecting different results. And if you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always got. And the point is, change will never happen just because you want change. Amen? A lot of people want change. That doesn't mean change is going to happen just because you want change. Now, I... I I threw this up here this morning. How many remember a few years ago when I preached on this scripture, I, 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 I brought in a log. Remember that? For those of you that were not here, I brought in a log. I think I chopped through the log in like uh, 60 seconds or something like that. And then I brought, uh, then I, I brought Ty up and... Uh, of course, I, I challenged Ty to, to see if he could chop through that log quicker than I did. And what Ty did not know was that I dulled the axe head. And so I laid that thing down. Ty picks up the axe. I said, Go. And Ty's going, he goes, I don't know what's wrong with me. 
I can't get it. I said, Ty, I said, I got something to tell you, buddy. I said, I dulled the blade. <laughs> That's why he can just stay out there this morning. I still got to watch whenever I walk around him. The reason I did that analogy, and boy, did he play right into that. The reason that I gave that analogy is because a lot of people, they just keep swinging and swinging and swinging and they're getting nowhere. And they're, whew, man, I'm wore out. And they pick up the axe and they're going, Nothing's happening, but they keep swinging, and nothing happens, and they keep swinging, and the more we swing, the more tired we get. Amen? Now, listen, some of you in here ought to be able to relate to this. We want change. We talk about it. We pray about it. We seek in it, but we just keep swinging the same dull axe over and over and over again. We just keep beating the log. We just keep beating the log. We just keep beating the log, and we wear ourselves out. We're tired, and nothing ever changes. Using a dull axe requires great strength, so sharpen the blade. Some people, they keep swinging and swinging and swinging until they lose hope and they stop dreaming. And then some people, they swing and they swing and they swing and they get nowhere and finally they just give up. I guess nothing ever going to change for me. I guess it happens for other people, but it doesn't ever happen for me. I can tell you in uh, personal experience, man, a, a lot of you, uh, you don't... Uh, well, most of you have been with us long enough. You know, when Sharon and I got married, we, we had absolutely nothing. Uh, we, we, we laugh to this day. The, the photographer took a picture of Sharon's dad on the uh, church steps, and he had his, you know, like his pockets like that, like we broke him. And uh, we laugh all the time because <laughs> he didn't have anything to break. <laughs> we paid, uh, you know... It was one of those weddings, we, you know, you pay for your own wedding. Anybody in here ever do that? Yeah. You know, we paid for our own, uh, own wedding, and we went for I don't know how long. Uh, listen, we, Shannon and I got married. We didn't have furniture. And uh, I think we put a couple lawn chairs in the apartment, and that's what we sat on. And uh, we saved, and we saved, and we saved, and we uh, finally got enough money to buy some living room furniture after we got married, and then we saved and saved some more, and we finally got enough money. We had a choice. Uh, we had enough money to buy a little TV or a radio uh, or a stereo, and uh, we, we chose the stereo. And uh, we never had a TV for the longest, uh, longest time. We just listened, to the, just listened to the radio. And finally, Sharon, she said, man, if we just keep going the way we're going, you know, five years, we're still going to be in the same, same position. Ten years from now, if things don't ever change, we're just going to be, you know, if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. And she said, I'm going back to school, and I'm going to become a nurse. And so she went back to school, and she uh, became a nurse. So, you know, if you want things to change, then you got to change 
you, you got to change, right? That, that's why I, I, I tell people all the time I admire Nate and, and Rachel so much. He had a good paying job, but he wasn't satisfied with his job, so they got started their own business. Man, I, I just think, you know, with their faith in God, you know, I, I thought that was so cool, you know, because it, 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 that dead-end job, he would have been in that dead-end job. Nothing would have ever changed until he took a step of faith. There are, are, are some people in here that you weren't satisfied with the way life was going. I, I admire so many of you, uh, our, our foster families and our adoptive families. You wanted to make a difference in the lives of our young people. And so you became foster families and adoptive parents and, and things became, listen, nothing will ever change if you continue to do what you've always done. How many of you in here have some circumstances in your life that you need to see change? Anybody? Absolutely. How about a marriage? How about a job? How about people that complain about their physical fitness all the time? Right? Amber advocates, uh, advocates for mental health. How about your spiritual health? If you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always got. Now, I have been talking about individuals. But I want you to know the same holds true for churches. We get rutted. We get comfortable. We get complacent and we come to church week after week after week and we go through the motions and we do the same thing over and over and over again. So I know this is 2022, at least I think it is, right? But I want to talk to you about the year 2023. Because I want us to do something that we've never done in order to get something that we've never got. Because if we want to see change in the church, then we're going to have to change in the church. And I'm not going to wait to the beginning of 2023 to put forth the vision for 2023. Because when 2023 rolls around, I want to be ready to implement the vision. In other words, we got about three or four months here to get ready for what I'm about to share with you that's going to take place in 2023. In other words, we're going to have to sharpen our axe. Years ago, some of you remember this. Years ago, I preached a message, I think it was uh, a message at the beginning of the year, something like that, put forth the vision for the year. And I said, uh, I said this, I, I went back, I looked at my notes, I said, I'm not going to ask for any big steps, just a few tiny ones that will help us take a huge leap forward. Can I tell you, I have abandoned that idea.
I've abandoned that idea because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Israel is coming back into the land. In Matthew chapter 24, there is wars and rumors of wars, sickness, poverty, disease, natural disasters. There is false Christ, false prophets, false religions. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Timothy, I want you to know this, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. How many of you know that we are living in difficult times? For people are going to only love themselves and their money. They will be boastful. They will be proud. They will be scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing to be sacred. They will be unloving. They will be unforgiving. They will slander others, no self-control. They will be cruel. They will hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, puffed up with pride, love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious but reject the power that can make them godly. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul said, In the end times there would be a great falling away. Another translation says there will be a great rebellion against God. The last church that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 3 is the church of Laodicea. It's called the lukewarm church. John revealed a one world leader, a one world order, a one world currency, a one world political system, and a one world religious system. What I'm trying to say is this, Jesus Christ is coming and you and I need to swing for the fences. We need to aim higher than we've ever aimed. We need to dream bigger than we've ever dreamed. We need to put the pedal down. We need to fire all artillery. We need to either go or blow, put up or shut up. One of the two. This year's Vacation Bible School, I don't know, something was just different. I think this year's Vacation Bible School could have been the single most powerful week that I've ever experienced at this church. It was good. I mean, it was more than good. Including our teens that jumped in there and helped, we had about 275 young people every night. I don't know how many got saved. I know we baptized about 25 on the last night. At the finale, we had an estimated 500 hundred people here that night. I listen, I, I, I gotta tell you, you have a week like that. I was I was just floating on cloud nine. I mean, the people came. There was an excitement. There was an anticipation. God was present. And we had that kind of uh, that kind of move of God, and I, I just remember thinking, "Man, it's happening! It's happening! It's happening!" And I could not, I could not wait. I could not wait. I couldn't sleep for Sunday morning. I got up early, probably got down here to church about six in the morning. I just could not wait to see what God was going to do on that Sunday morning. Sunday morning rolls around, it was the lowest attended service of our entire year. Anybody ever been gut punched before? Yeah? Anybody ever had the wind taken out of your sails? You know what I'm talking about? 
you think it's going to be one way and it turns out to be another way. And man, I just I just felt like I someone took a ball bat and hit me right in the gut on Sunday morning. And I complained a little bit to the Lord about it. Now, I know there's probably no one in here that has ever complained to the Lord about anything, is there? And it was one of those times where I, I'm not going to tell you it was the audible voice of God speaking from a cloud, but it was pretty plain. And God said, you can whine and complain, or you can do something about it. I'm going to do something about it. You can whine and complain, or you can do something. I've had, well, let me back up. Since the inception of this church, it's been all about youth. We've packed them in here for 30-some years. And I've had more than a couple people lately say, you know, Chris, where did all the youth go? Where did all the youth go? Well, listen, this is not rocket science. Look around. Number one, we are an aging congregation. Right? It's not rocket science. We're getting older. But number two, if you examine what's going on, Kelly, we, in the last three years alone, we have graduated enough young people in this church to start our own Bible college. Right? So it, 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 again, it's simple math. Now, we know that they're out there, right? We know that they're out there. We know that they're willing to come. 85% of everyone that gets saved does so now before the age of 25. So I'm asking the question, if 85% of people that are being saved do so before the age of 25, why would we fish in any other pond? Amen? We want everyone to come and see the great things that God is doing. But they will never come and see until you and I are willing to go and tell. If we are willing to go, if we will go, they will come. So here's the big announcement. Here it is. If parents won't bring their kids to church, we are going to go get them.
starting yesterday, we are beginning to build a bus ministry. And we are going to fill this place with kids that need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I think somebody ought to say amen and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I've been a part of a bus ministry before. We've bussed in over a thousand. Now, I don't know that we're going to bust in a thousand out of Amanda when they only have 700 people in Amanda. But I'll tell you this. If you just bust in a hundred. Because here's what I found out. You get the kids and the parents will follow. The plan is to be operational by January or at the latest February of 2023. I've already been to a bus sale. I didn't buy them. But we're already out there. We're going to buy buses. Kelly, stand if you would. Kelly is going to administrate our entire bus ministry. <laughs> and you can be assured, you are wanted. And you are needed, because I'm telling you, this is big, and it takes a lot of manpower and woman power. It is a lot of work, but there is going to be nothing more rewarding when God does this. And I'm telling you. We can do what we've always done and get what we've always gotten and complain because we're losing our young people and we can complain, you know, they're graduating and no one else is coming up and you, you can say everything that you want to say or you can roll your sleeves up, you can get out there in the community and we can go get them. Let me see, all you guys on the front row, help me out here. I have handouts, split them up. I have handouts for everybody this morning. You don't need to go through it uh, right now, but it is going to explain some things. And Kelly, I'm going to help you out this morning. The last page, yeah, you can go pass them out now. The last page in there has Kelly's phone number and his email address on there. Um, it also has a picture of a shuttle bus and the school bus that we want. And so you are going to help us out. You are going to scour the internet from here to Hawaii. I don't care. We will drive to California if that's where we got to go to pick up these buses. But anyway... Uh, the information is in there, and then on page number two, this is what it's going to take to do a bus ministry. And I want you to see where you fit in and fill this out, and you can get it back to Kelly. You don't need to get it to me, you need to get it to Kelly. And we are going to work on all of this. Right here. Now, the rest of these 
pages, there's other, there's other information in there. The other information, I thought while we are handing this out, there are a lot of you that are new to Frontline or newer. And uh, I put some information in there because I just want you to know how we operate. And there's uh, that information that you can read through at your own, uh, in your own timing. And I think it would be very helpful for you to understand the church that you attend. And so that information is also included in this packet of information. So here's the second part of the big announcement. Believe it or not, there are people that claim to be saved that do absolutely nothing to build the kingdom of God. But that doesn't describe the people I'm talking to in here. Because the people I'm talking to in here, I, I, I'm going to describe you, okay, for you. Most people that I know, their nose is at the waterline. They get up early, they go to bed late. They are busting it every single day, trying to make it. You guys are some of the hardest workers that I have ever encountered. Most people in here, you've been running for so long that you're running on empty. Does that sound right? And I can't control your personal life. And there may need, I, I don't know, there may need to be some adjustments and rearranging of some priorities. I don't know. That's your life. But here's what I want you to know from me to you. I don't want church to add to your headache. I want church to be the place that you look forward to going and the place where you feel fulfilled in ministry. The Pharisees man, they were trying to chop wood with a dull axe. The Pharisees served God out of ritual. They served him out of routine. It was not real and there was no relationship. They were going through the motions. A lot of predictable but no power. A lot of judgment but no joy. And church should not be like that. One of my favorite places on the planet is Utah. They have five national parks. It's called the Mighty Five. Anybody been there to the Mighty Five? Yep. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I want to propose to you that we can do more by doing less. I think that we can have addition by subtraction. I'm going to make things really simple. And I'm calling this new arrangement of our ministries five to focus on. Just five. Sunday morning service. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Bible studies. Bus ministry youth ministry, and big events. Christmas, Easter, our church picnic, and VBS. Just five. Just five. Sunday morning service, Bible studies, bus ministry, youth ministry, big events. And there's the major ones we do. 
I'm not trying to make life, I'm not trying to put more on your plate. Your plate is full. I'm trying to simplify things so that we can put all of our energy up here toward these five. Simple. The third part of the big announcement is when 2023 rolls around, I would like everyone to involve themselves in a Bible study or start one. If it's not convenient for you, the Bible studies that we have throughout the week, if it's not convenient for you to, to one of those Bible studies, start your own. Pick a day. Pick a morning. Pick a night. Pick a Sunday afternoon. Pick a Saturday. It makes no difference to me. I would just like to see everybody involved in a Bible study. And there is a good reason for this. The number one way to disciple people is through the Word. The best way to get people to grow in their faith is through the Word. The best way to foster fellowship is through the Word. If you want more of God, get in the Word. So let me uh, let me close. Let me let me wind let me wind some things down here for you. I'm almost 61. Sixty-one. And do you know that I have people in my graduating class that have already passed away? Uh, I, I know people my age. I just did. I, I just did a funeral the other day. I think it was six. No, it was sixty-one. My age. I've got people that I graduated with having heart attacks and strokes, and I'm going, man, that's that's young. That seems really young. A lot of people, they get 60, 70, their health starts declining. And none of us know how long we have left here on this earth. No one. And I said all of that to say this. I believe with all of my heart I'm not just saying it for a fact. Hook me up to a lie detector and it would show you that I believe with every fiber of my being that Jesus Christ is getting ready to split the eastern skies. And however long I have left here on this earth, I want to use it to bring in the harvest. And I believe that I am more determined now than I have ever been to reach people for Jesus. But we've got to be intentional about it. It won't just happen because we sit back and talk about it. It won't just happen because we want it to happen. It won't just happen even because we just get down and pray that it will happen and then do nothing about it. I've got two, two sayings that I live by. I actually got more than two sayings, but two that I, I, I really enjoy that I try to make a part of my life. The first one 
is this. Danny, this is really profound. You ready for this? If you aim at nothing, you will usually hit it. Right? If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. The second one is fail to plan and you plan to fail. I've got one uh, pastor that I have a lot of respect for and he said, uh, he said, if you never If you never ask for a commitment, you'll never get one. So I'm asking. I'm asking for buy-in. I'm asking for a commitment. Because if we do what we've always done, we will get what we've always done got and time is short we need to sharpen our axe we must sharpen our axe and bring in the harvest sharpen your axe build the kingdom of God bring in the harvest wouldn't that be cool? Bus pulls around on a Sunday morning and 100 kids jump off the buses. Are you ready for 100 kids if they jump off the bus? You ready if 100 kids jump off the bus and then 100 parents follow along behind? How many of you believe that God can do that? See, I believe he can if we do, if we sharpen the axe and we do what we are called to do, then God will do what we can't do. Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet? Ben, put something on for me. We're going to pray this morning. Has the big announcement been okay? All right. I'm just talking about winning souls into the kingdom. That's all I care about. We got to win souls into the kingdom of God. In two weeks, I'm going to share with you a big surprise. Two weeks. Can you wait for two weeks? Going to have to. Big surprise. But the big announcement is going to get souls into the kingdom. And that's what keeps me going. Doing what Jesus has called us to do. Kelly, would you bring you and your wife and come on up front? Now, I'm asking, thank you, both of you, both of you. It's going to be big, big commitment. I'm asking you for commitment. You read, you read the paper, and you, you figure out where you fit on there. You figure out how you can help. You figure out how you can get involved. If you are willing to commit to this, 
I want you to come on up, and I want you to join these guys, and we're going to pray for them, and we're just going to pray. We're just going to pray for the big announcement as a whole. We're going to pray for young people in this community. You can either you, you can either whine and complain about where they're at, or we can go get them. I say we go get them. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. There we go. First one up is our youth guy. He better be excited about this. He's about to get 100 new people in his youth group. You can gather around this close. Hey, come on in. Gather in here as close as you can. Yep. Very good. All of our youth leaders. Hey, someone run back and get uh, get Roy or Amy. Tell, uh, send them out here too. Huh? Yeah, Je yeah uh, someone run up and get Jesse in that gang. R Lisa, run up there and get Jesse. Ben, give me, give me some worship music up there. That sounds like I've been on hold for an hour. <laughs> we need some DC talk or some Petra or something. <laughs> yeah, it kind of dates everything, doesn't it? Roy, come on up here, buddy. This prayer is for you. You, uh, you're going to need this prayer, Roy. Amy, you're going to need this prayer right here. Amy, now you see all these people here? They're committed. They're going to get you a hundred people in your class. <laughs> yeah, she's not out of here. She's in. She's all in with this. All in. All right. Come in. Stretch your hands this way if you can't get in here. I want you to pray. Kelly and Heather, I want you to pray over them. Boy, they need, they need your prayers right here. They need your prayers. All of our youth people, they need your prayers. Everyone that is making a commitment this morning, a commitment this morning, Lord, Heavenly Father, I'm praying for them. I'm praying for all of them, God. Lord, this is, I, I believe with all of my heart, Lord, sitting in a lawn chair, God, you spoke into my heart. Lord, I believe that you gave me this vision. Lord, I believe that you showed me what you want us to do. And Lord, that is, Lord, change. Lord, change needs to begin with me, first and foremost. Lord, would you change me? Would you change my heart? Would you change my direction? Would you change my thinking? Would you change my faith? Would you change my priorities? Would you change my commitment? Lord, would you help me, God, Lord, that my life would come in line with your life and my plans would come in line with your plans. And, Father, I'm just believing, God, that you're in this 
and you're going to help us. I don't know where it's all coming from, but Lord, I've seen you get us to this point, and I know that he that has begun a good work in us will complete that work. And so, God, I'm praying for young people. Lord, I just pray for the north, the south, the east, and the west that you're going to help us to, uh, Lord, to, to build this ministry. Lord, you're going to help us to build bus routes, that you'll help us to fill bus routes. Lord, that you're going to give us the people who are committed, Lord, committed to doing it. Lord, I pray for Kelly, and I pray for Heather. Lord, this is going to be the point, man, right here. And Lord, I know how the enemy wants to come against those Lord, who are in leadership positions, I pray a hedge of protection around them. And Lord, I pray that you would give them vision. Lord, that you would help them to build the kingdom of God through this ministry. I pray for every one of our youth leaders. I pray for Jason. I pray for Jody. I pray for Kenny. I pray for Becky. I pray for Roy. I pray for Amy. And Lord, everyone else that's come alongside of them to help them. God, it's, it, they're going to need you now more than they've ever needed you. God, this is you. Lord, I believe it's by divine appointment that you raised up this church for such a time as this. God, I just pray that you would help us to bring in the harvest. God, help us to sharpen our axe. Give us wisdom. Give us an anointing upon this ministry. Lord, I ask it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are on board, would you shout amen and put your hands together. Listen, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being a part of the big announcement. I want to thank you for being a part as far as commitment is concerned. And I want to thank you for the buy-in. Uh, like I said, in that packet of information I, I've given you, there's a lot of stuff in there just for you to read on your own. A lot of good stuff. If you have any questions for me, you can call me. You can talk to me if you've got questions for Kelly. Uh, listen, once you get going, uh, if you find a bus, you need to call that guy right there. And uh, we'll fly to where we need to fly to, and we'll go pick him up. Uh, we just need to, uh, we're going to get after it. we got three months to get after it. Get on the computer. Get on Facebook. Get on Craigslist. Get on eBay. Call your neighbors, call your friends, call the bus lots, call schools, whatever you got to do. Let's make it happen in Jesus' name. God bless you. We will see you back here next week. Two weeks, the big surprise. There are invitations out in the narthex. Make sure that you mail an invitation to someone that you want to come. Help us by stacking the chairs. God bless you. Have a great week.